Hello, Dota 2 fans, and welcome to another match from the MDL Macau North American Qualifier. I am Mortgage, please, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. Grateful to be here casting this bounty of NA Dota for you guys, and even more grateful to have my comrade Franzi with me for the ride. Franz, EGJ just dropped a 2 0 to BSJ and the Leviathan boys. Uh, what do you think their chances are of bouncing back and finding themselves a 2-0 of their own here? I mean, I, I'm sure their chances against BSJ were pretty pretty much 0% to begin <laughs> with, but, you know, I, I'd give them the uh, the advantage in this series just because, you know, of each J Storm, they have a lot more experience than this blue Pikachu squad. But, you know, I wouldn't put it past blue Pikachu to win this series. Yeah, definitely. We've seen, uh, you know, tougher feats realized in, in NA, at least. Uh, we're already hopping into the draft here. Give me your thoughts here, because this is a, a hero I can't really get a beat on, uh, especially when I'm solo casting. Why has Brewmaster come back into favor so heavily? So Brewmaster's he's a really good frontliner for your for your uh, lineup, and just in general in lane, he's super annoying with that drunken haze. He makes it really hard for for your opponents to last hit or trade hits, and uh, you know if if the opponents don't have like a certain type of lineup, it's really hard to deal with a Brewmaster. You know. Uh, just because when he gets when Brewmaster gets that split off, it's so effective in team fights. Yeah, it definitely offers a lot of control, and uh, nobody ever enjoyed a lane up against Drunken Haze. That is for sure. Wyvern's gonna be the ban. We saw a crit tweet about Wyvern. Of course, he predicted it all along, even before TI. Uh, definitely first phase material uh, as of recent time. Some of the stronger heroes still left over. Uh, we see Rubik first phase a lot. We we see Beastmaster considered one of the stronger heroes. Uh, left in the pool, still VGJ mulling over their last first phase ban here. Yeah, there's, just, there's a couple of cool bans here. So I think the IO first ban is targeted towards Stan King because, you know, Stan loves to play that hero. But, you know, Bane seems to be a really strong hero this match just because that Enfeeble is so annoying in lane. I mean, he's similar to a Lich, right? You just send him to a lane and suddenly that lane is, is pretty much won. Omni Knight. Uh, Blue Pikachu, they actually open with a Tiny, so... Tiny, Tiny's pretty up and coming this patch. I think he's uh he's been super strong in the in all the games I've seen him yeah. actually. Just that status resistance makes him really hard to deal with in the late game. But mm -hmm. you know, compared to the old Tiny, this new Tiny act is actually capable of farming because of that tree grab spell. Because if you think about the old Tiny, you, you felt like you had to go for kills with right. with uh, avalanche toss. But now that you have tree grab, you know you have the option of of farming or, or even putting a uh, pressure on power so he, he comes online a lot more quickly if if i could say that yeah i mean it's an interesting point uh, allows him to scale kind of through the mid game similar to the viper changes i suppose where he was more reliant on kills before the addition of the nether toxin now he has some way to farm waves and camps relatively quickly so as you mentioned tiny kind of in the same vein uh gonna be a little stronger and in fact if vchj just would have looked at ryu's twitter pretty sure he tweeted like 15 minutes ago about how broken tiny was so um scrooge mcduck in the in the captain's chair seems to agree with him they're gonna pick up the razor alongside this tiny uh, in the first phase where do you see the tiny laning best front i think he's a safe one here because if you put him mid then he gets bullied out of lane too easily by by mm -hmm. certain mid laners whereas in the safe lane you know the supports can help him and he can also help the supports because you know avalanche toss uh isn't a joke in lane and actually the razor picks a little bit interesting as well you know razor is really strong in lane but i believe that the passive purges off guardian angel from omni knight and it also purges off sprint which i'm not sure if if that's intended mm -hmm. now prox on its own uh, that unstable current uh, for those of you who've been sleeping for the past month or so Clockwork Ban is going to come out from Vichy J side. The Storm Spirit is going to be taken away from 747 or Blue mm. Pikachu. You know, Vichy J Storm, they, they opened with a Slaughter Omni Knight, and I think the kind of play style that defines this squad is like they, they like to move around the map together a lot. They like to be super fast and super aggressive in the early game, and these two heroes uh, really uh, complement that play style. The problem I have right now for their lineup is that uh, I feel like they don't have any tools to deal with the Razor, but, you know, they have three more picks for that. But also, uh, these two heroes are, are melee, so, you know, Blue Pikachu can can also pick a lot of things to punish that. Mm -hmm. 
one of the limitations of the Omni compared to his other similar nature heroes as far as the Dazzle, the Oracle, the IO. This is another hero we ha hadn't seen much of for the past couple of seasons and uh, seems to be coming back into favor. I saw, saw a Reddit post the other day, which, which obviously translates to Pro Dota, but uh, Octarine Core Shadow Demon seems pretty good if you can get it. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Shadow Demon is no longer this, this illusion creating machine. He actually kind of operates in, in like a more wider uh amount of uh situations and of course you see like he, he can solo kill people especially when you start getting those talents for the shadow poison cooldown and then the banish duration if you somehow get to level 25 but yeah yeah shadow demon actually isn't a joke in team fights i mean he busts yeah. out a lot of damage yeah and that um the the ulti spawning an illusion of an enemy hero is actually sometimes super useful yeah, you mentioned um, them lacking, you know, with the opening at least, ways to deal with Rager. Demonic Purge, fairly reliable uh, in dealing with him at least, you know, when he tries to run into the engagements, get a long duration link off. So, uh, starting to take steps towards that. Rubichi Storm. Yeah, super useful. It's also super useful for uh, setting up kills uh, against the Tiny and Razor later in the game. Or, or early on in the game, you know, before that slaughter gets blink, you know, you you have the support duo Shadow Demon and Slaughter, and they can actually set up kills easily yeah. on their own. Mm -hmm. Actually, you actually mentioned the the Rubik pick. I mean, this hero pops up a lot. Yeah. He's always been a good hero, I think, in the last few years. It's just that you have to decide whether or not, uh, you know, he's better than some of the other support picks in the meta. And right now, Rubik's super good because you know that null field got switched. So you, he actually helps provide damage in a way. Right. But also having that instant initiation from telekinesis is always super useful. Yeah, a bit of a, a catch-all of a support, a little Swiss Army knife of a support. Doesn't necessarily, you know, have to stay near the lane or uh, you know, commit himself to wave clear, much like a wyvern does, is decent at roaming, is a pretty good uh, self-sufficient safe lane support can allow you to be greedy with your other pick so as you mentioned just flexible has the instant cast po ca cast point disable talk a little bit about this luna pick uh that's going to come out for ritsu here for vgj it's just too too hard to pass up with an omni behind you and, and the shadow demon illusions as well yes yeah, so you have the shadow demon illusions but also it they, they have um <clears throat> sorry blue pikachu kind of has the later picks right so at this point they wanted a stable carry uh that you know, would be good against uh, most offlaners. And, you know, Luna providing that damage, and then you have Shadow, Shadow Demon Slaughter to help uh, set up the kill. So even if Blue Pikachu picks up a hero like Doom, you know, with the Luna tri-lane, you, you have a lot of kill potential on, on most offlaners. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you know, you got, you got the beefed-up Luna with the Repel, with the Guardian Angel, super hard to deal with. It gives VGJ Storm uh, a lot of building damage, which actually the, none of their first three heroes really provided any building damage, so... Pretty cool pickup from them. Yeah, absolutely. And that seems to be, you know, aside from the tiny, um, a little bit of a shortcoming thus far in Blue Pikachu's draft as far as uh, heroes that can siege reliably. Um, VTJ can do it with, you know, relatively low risk with the illusions uh, as well. Bit of a concern on my part for, for Blue Pikachu. Their uh, lineup seems very much so run at you with the Doom. And the Razor, and it seems like already uh, VCJ have some pretty good ways to deal with that with the defensive banish, the Omni Knight behind the Luna, and the Luna in general, Eclipse just kind of punishes you for running deep into fights. I feel like the Doom pick was targeted as sort of a counter to the Omni Knight. You know, they want to right. open every fight with, with a Doom on the Omni Knight just to prevent it from casting spells. Mm -hmm. But you, you kind of brought it up like it, there's no clear way that Blue Pikachu actually win. Uh, a team fight against VGJ Storm, at least if they're both on equal net worth. You know, you gotta, uh, you know, whenever the tiny uh, initiates on someone, they get uh, they get instantly banished by the Shadow Demon, so then that that kind of kill is over. And then, uh, you know, the, with the Slardar uh, Crush Amp Damage combo, you know, Luna can actually kill any of the heroes on Blue Pikachu Mirana. right now. Mm -hmm. So the Marana pick for Blue Pikachu is going to round out the lineup here. So you expect this Marana more than likely to be roaming with the Doom in the offlane? 
I feel like it's going to be a mid Morana, and I feel like they picked it just to have a mid laner that's super difficult to kill. You know, even if Shadow Demon Slaughter set up a kill on her, and you have the three leap charges, so right. it's it's not the easiest kill in the, in the game. And so, with that in mind, you know, it, it allows Rubik and and Doom or of pain. actually, I don't know who the support on on Blue <laughs> Pikachu is going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's Rubik and Doom. So I think yeah. it allows the Rubik and Doom to to sort of move around and get a lot more done. And I feel like VGJ Storm kind of picked the Queen of Pain for that same reason, you know, to have a really solid mid laner that generally doesn't need help in the lane mm -hmm. so that your supports can move around. And I think that's super important in this patch just because, you know, there's four bounty runes on the map in close proximity. There's so much value in, in having your supports being in a, in a position to fight for those bounty runes and just to fight for objectives in general. Yeah, it's been really... Uh... Interesting and fun for me to see, you know, such that the, the bounty runes are so close together, as you were mentioning, and the fact that we're given TPs on loadout. Just so many interesting plays early on in the game, as far as those early bounty rune skirmishes go. Uh, still being able to TP back to your lane and block the creeps uh, seems like a nice luxury for for Dota to have recently. I don't know. How, I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes it's super clowny, you know. You got the 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 lane slot musical chairs. <laughs> Get the uh, triple lane swap, and then the team that actually like preemptively walk to the lane instead of using their TPs, they get the winning lane matchup. Except one minute later, they TP again. A lot of drawing on the map. So Smoke boots comes off every chain. Yeah, yeah boots so on on the Doom, and then the the Marana with the Wraith pen. So looks like you're correct in your assumption that Marana will be going mid. Holy crap! What's smoke going on into here? smoke mid lane, snaking out front. And the lift's gonna follow the Slardar. They get the static link off as well. And actually, they're gonna disrupt him and pretty much seal his fate here, it feels. Flea getting body blocked up. Purification will be there. But the big right clicks from the Razor will get the first blood. The Doom, he's gonna walk away with his life. Now 747 forced to skill Blink. And a rough engagement in the mid lane for Vichy J Storm as they lose the first blood. Uh, and they also have their Queen of Pain skilling Blink here to begin off this mid lane. Uh, I really want to know what, <laughs> what did we just witness? Okay, so he opened with a telekinesis on the slider, right? Yeah. And then Stan King ba banishes uh, Flea, which actually puts Flea in like the worst position yeah. because you just set up the stun for the arrow and the the uh, the avalanche as well. Whereas I I feel like the alternative is well, first of all, Rubik shouldn't be tossing the slider into his team. And then Slaughter gets like a four man crush. <laughs> Top lane. They are gonna get the arrow off. There's a three man crush, so already flee. He's stunned up seven heroes this game, but I <laughs> continue. It looks like this will disperse for now. You get a four man crush and then you get a purification on those four, and then suddenly like the enemy team's missing half their health, and then you don't lose your slaughter. But anyway. That that was that was funny to watch. Mm -hmm. We actually have an aggressive uh trial lane from from Luna, so there's like this huge emphasis this patch, I think, on being able to pressure yeah. the uh, quote-unquote enemy safe laner. Oh, oh, cancel it. And they get the disruption off. Now Flea in a good position as well. He's going to get lifted for the moment and is barely out of Slytherin crush range, it seems. As only 29 damage going the way of the Razor. It's quite a bit at this point, but it doesn't mean that they can continue to pursue for, uh, forward, especially 2v3. And yeah, you were mentioning kind of the ability to pressure the safe lane, getting so f you know so little experience out of uh, denied creeps relative to the previous patches. It does seem like you can really hinder the enemy safe laner if you uh, apply pressure early on. Yeah, the, the denying XP, but specifically this game as well. You know, Razor's not a hero that catches up. If Razor, you know, gets super punished in this laning phase, he's never coming back into this game. Whereas mm -hmm. in bottom lane, you know, Snaking has well, Snaking taking a lot of damage here. Yeah, feeling pretty confident with the mango there to stick around and does put a little bit of punishment into the doom who is just level one at this moment so snaking living dangerously but top lane as well a lot of damage on the razor take a first look at mid at where the marana sitting on one and two to the eight and five of Rioya 747's co-op Doing pretty well in the true 1v1 vacuum. We're seeing a lot more of this actual 1v1 lanes in mid. Snaking bottom. Oh, no. That took help. I think oh, we caught it. Level 2 on the Doom did have the uh, Thunderclap from the Tomato as well. Meanwhile, top lane, Flea. 
and Stanking chasing down save. They'll have a crush in another two seconds, but Flea, without the sprint, unable to pursue under tower, and now going to go for the TP out. He should make it successfully. I never got a chance to talk about it, or I didn't really say it explicitly, but when they cancelled that TP on Razor, it was actually huge because, you know, Razor versus Omni Knight, the Omni Knight gets crushed. Whereas in this top lane, you know, the Luna is actually able to form against the Razor, so that puts the lane in a fa lanes in a favorable position for, for VGJ Storm. Nonetheless, 2-0 to nil thus far for Blue Pikachu, including that first blood. But CS heavily dominated by the Radiant side across the board. Infernal Blade going on Snake King bottom. He's got two points in the D-Gen aura, and he is just going to man up on Alrin, who's forced to Scorch Earth and back away. You know, VGJ Storm, they're just going to continue uh, doing what they're doing right now. Snake King's going to get a lot out of this bottom lane, unless he dies again. And looks like he may just drop here. Gets the stick charge off, but... He'll end up taking down Ryu, the one with the right click to finish him off. Did, he kind of felt like he wanted to bait the Doom in there, continuing the trade with the time. He felt like the degen aura was enough to allow them to do that. And Doom did come back in, but he regened a fair amount as top lane. They will get the disruption off, and Crush will follow. Scrooge, Lucent Beam is there, but they just don't have enough damage just yet for this Razor. He does have the Magic Wand on his person as well. I think the Crush also missed. Yeah, it, it looked like it did. I mean, Rubik's, Rubik's playing that correctly. He's waiting for the Vanish to to tick down so that he can lift the slaughter so the slaughter can't immediately open with the, the crush. And mm -hmm. Snaking is definitely a little bit crazy in this bottom lane. I don't think he should have died uh, at all this lane, but you know he's still getting a lot out of this lane. Almost level 5. That level 5 will be a huge turning point for him. I think he's, he'll be able to trade hits a lot better with a tiny. Especially when he picks up a soul ring as well. A soldier's fortune. Ritsu top lane farming nicely, uh, especially relative to his laning counterpart in the Razor. And even if you include the Tiny, meanwhile, bot lane, Toss goes up onto Snake King, and a TP in from Flea will deter any further aggression from Blue Pikachu. Hanging around, Snake King gets the Purify off. Still, though, Flea not really in fighting shape, and he'll be forced to back away. EP stalking around the tree line as Courier going to deliver a ward and a set of Tangos. Meanwhile, top lane. Things gonna stagnate a bit. Marana forced to base. Not sure how that happened, but she'll TP back out mid as level, you know, four and seven four seven level six at this point on the Queen of Pain. Oh, blink in. The Queen of Pain's crushing this lane right now. Now over double the CS, 19-20 now denies for the VGJ Storm mid laner. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Flea in the trees, looking maybe to bait Snaking here. Thinking about making a move. Level 1 sprint, we'll see if he can catch up with Ryu, who does have the Ava if he needs to turn around and use it in defense. So here's how I see this game going. So Ritsu is going to want to hit level 6 or 7. And then PCJ Storm, they're going to make some huge rotation with the Slaughter and the Omni Knight where they take like either the mid tier 1 or the uh, the top tier 1. Bottom lane, the looks like there'll be a yeah. fight for the rune as 747 continues to chase for it. He's going to force the shrine to be popped here. Starfall is going to come out, Crush is there. But Flea, he's just going to play Sacrificial Lamb here as... He gets taken out to the Hadouken from the Doom. Still, though, 747 getting everything he wants in this mid lane. As he, still, the Marana yet to eclipse that level 5 mark where he is level 7. So the, the wagons are out for both teams right now. Well, we'll have to see if a team makes a move with it. I'm pretty sure. So the starter's starting to run top. And they saw the Rubik TP to the right side of the map. So they might go for a kill on this Razor. The important part, though, is they, they need a tower so that they can free up some space for Flea to farm his blink. Snake King playing very safely in the bottom lane. And meanwhile, top lane, they will find the opening on the Razor. Rubik was smoked up bottom, stalking Snake King. And Snake playing well within the reach of his tower. He's going to survive for now. You mentioned the uh, Siege Wave here. 
pretty big wave as well as the Cardi top uh, with Ritsu. They should get level 2 in the Lunar Blessing. A decent amount of damage done on this tower. Now Snake King, bottom lane. He's going to get Avid up, toss back into the Static Link. And the Rubik nearby with the lift. He gets the Repel off. And trying to body block him up is the Doom. Snake King actually just going to walk away from this one. Now the Banish coming through and rotating in with the Sonic Wave through 2. Out of mana is 747 and... They're looking to chase for it as Rubik and the Razor trying to make it out, but Razor will not be long for this world. Right click coming through. Flea still surviving. Save in trouble though. Snake King kicking down, but has a soul ring and can stick around. Rubik gonna end up dropping. That was as two go down for Blue Pikachu and a timely rotation in from the highest level hero in the game in 747. Will help his team's cause in that bottom lane. Bump into the Doom near the bounty room and catch a little harass for it. That was a super ki optimistic kill attempt on Snaking. I don't think Snaking was ever in any danger. He had like 12 stick charges. He, he had his Repel and Guardian Angel available, so I don't think that kill would have happened. The only hero that could have made that happen for Blue Pikachu was the Marana, but I feel like Villain probably feels like he's too behind mm -hmm. to sort of make rotations like that. And as a result, you know, VGJ Storm. They get the top tower. Slardar has has his bottom lane to himself now to Blessings attempt to, to farm his blink dagger because you know he's probably the only initiator for his team at the moment. So I imagine VGJ Storm they're going to try to make a rotation without the Slardar in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, speaking of the Slardar's net worth, he is pretty much at parity with the mid lane Murano for Blue Pikachu. So never a good sign here as the laning stage be begins to break down. Now a wrap mid lane. Still under the cover of smoke is 747. Gonna blink for it. Get his complement of spells off. And the Marana actually taking a lot of damage. He only has a level 1 blink, so it'd be hard to pursue deep behind the tower. Meanwhile, now down on the low ground near the uh, shrine. A little bit out of position, maybe, for VGJ as Stan King gets the purge off onto the Razor. Now the static link, though. Snake King up in the front lines could be in trouble. Gets the repel off, but he's tossed back up into the air. Now he's going to pop the GA. Should give him enough time to get a repel off if he sticks, and he does. The clips bouncing through, but not very fortunately here for Ritsu. And the toss forward finishes off the Omni Knight. Meanwhile, Stan King in a little bit of trouble here. Gets a Banish off and will, at the very least, delay this out. Gets a couple of Shadow Poison stacks off. The Rubik going to get fairly low, in fact. Will end up TPing out, and Ritsu goes for his as well. Ritsu will be able to make it away down to the bottom lane. But all in all, just down in that valley near the shrine, uh, those two heroes caught in and pincered. And it will be a 2-0 to nil for BP. I'm curious if uh, Blue Pikachu scanned or, you know, they just sensed that a gank was coming because, you know, before any of that happened, the Doom was already to the top, which is kind of peculiar. Oh, talking about Doom, he's <laughs> in a cage match. Alright. <laughs> that was uh, one of the better initiations I've seen in recent times. Alright, now, you're going to get chased down. Screaming Pain will be there. And he'll throw out the wand charges just to make them really work for that meal but either way they'll find themselves a free pick off and in fact it's a doom cooldown net as well in that top lane for Vichy J. unfortunately ritsu is bottom lane and tp'd here recently so they won't be able to put in any tower pressure towards that tier two meanwhile mid lane tp'ing in 747 right on the face of rai who's gonna force the toss up and now the crush coming through from the north side for flea and a scream turnaround 747 well aware of his comrade's position there for Flea and grabs the kill on Ryu mid lane. A pretty good sequence of events for Richie J Storm. I mean, Flea TP top, he was looking for a uh, sort of a straggler in the top lane. He found one with the uh, with the Doom kill there, so that was a really good kill for him. He's about 1k gold away from his blink. Not particularly close, so I imagine there'd be one or two fights before he'll end up picking that item up. And in bot lane, you know, Shadow Demon Luna, they've been slowly sieging this bot tower. I haven't gotten too much damage on it, but I think at the moment Ritz is waiting out his uh, his Eclipse cooldown because BGJ Storm is the kind of team where if they feel like they are in a position to fight, they're just going to keep running at you and mm -hmm. you know, they're probably just waiting for the cooldowns right now. Guardian Angel on Snaking and Eclipse is up as well now. Feels they'd be more than correct in that assumption as well. As you look at the metrics across the board, Ichij with sizable leads for this juncture in the game. 6k in the way of net worth, just over 4 in the way of experience is their advantage. 
This tiny is going to be a real long way before uh, he can actually fight into the enemy team. I think he needs a mobility item like a Shadow Blade or Blink because if you look at Blue Pikachu's lineup, they actually don't have an initiator. Like uh, Doom doesn't really count it as initiation. So they really need either the Rubik or the Tiny to uh, to open these fights and you know you follow it up with an arrow. But you know at that point it's <coughs> it's still not easy. So Michi J the Storm, they're actually making the first move. They're moving the Luna and the, the Shadow Demon up top. Mid lane, Rubik gonna show. And they're gonna make their way towards Snake King. As you alluded to, Lucent Beam well within range here, but as you mentioned, 1,000 leap charges available to the Mirana. She'll use two of them, still holding one. We'll get into the fog. Now R Ryu gonna TP in, gets the Avatoss off onto the Luna, but she's gonna get healed up. Eclipse is gonna pop. Tiny taking a lot of damage. Ritsu, however, forced to pop the Mask of Madness and run down to the south. Goes for the TP out on the east side with the arrow already used. Will be able to make it. Meanwhile, the other side of the map, Slard are gonna be taken out to the Doom. Stand King and Snake King. Turn tail and run to the west. They're going to survive for now. When all said and done, just flee. Actually, no casualties in that top lane, as unfortunately the Marana did have all her uh, leap charges at the moment. So I I'm willing to bet that someone on VGJ Storm is yelling at their teammates right now because what happened was, you know, the those three heroes made a the, the Omni, the Shadow Demon, and the Luna. They made a huge rotation to die of that tier two, right? They really wanted. I think they really wanted that tier two. But instead, what happened was the Slaughter and the Queen of Pain went for a kill on the uh, the Rubik in the mid lane. And they got the Rubik, but the Doom showed up and killed the Slaughter. But, you know, the the alternative is, I'm pretty sure, if the Slaughter and the Queen of Pain showed up top, you know, they would have got a full team wipe and, and taken that tier 2. For now, though, still feels like they have good presence across the map with these two deep wards and they are going to continue as you mentioned to pay some mind to this top tier two tp inbound is going to be in range here uh or in vision excuse me and they're going to pop the moonlight shadow that should have been scouted i want to say by vchj storm and immediately they're going to turn to the west snaking the only one within initiation range and as we've seen a couple of instances thus far in this game he's a re relatively difficult kill it's got the degen aura and the phase boots so able to make it away from the invisible doom so i feel like vhj storm are in a really comfortable position right now you're waiting for the blink on the sardar you know the enemy team doesn't have like the fastest farmers in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, VGJ Storm, they have the Luna, which is like su super quick at farming. Oh, oh free Marana. bottom lane is gonna catch the crush, gets the amp damage or corrosive haze, excuse me, off once again. And the Lucent Beam from distance, but another leap comes through. Ryu gonna tiny combo up flea. He gets the magic wand off and will get a crush, but it's not enough for them to completely turn it. As finally getting an opportunity to take out that Marana. And unfortunately, Flea going to be punished for it. Meanwhile, Snake King, top lane. Doesn't know how close he is to a certain death here. He's going to get netted up and Doom through the Repel. Static Link will be there as well. Purification going to go on offensively. Stolen by the Rubik here. And Eye of the Storm popped. Infernal Blade is there. And Snake King, he's going to drop. No immediate trades in sight as Arrow's going to fly and hit the Queen of Pain mid lane. Filling going to get the double Star Storm off onto the Quap as well. She's gonna, just going to stand and fight though. Sonic Wave will come out. But the Mirana, in fact, the one to find the kill first. More gold and the experience. Going to go the way of that blue Pikachu mid laner. And that is going to be potentially costly one as 1200 solo xp goes the way of the mirana yeah i mean it's super unfortunate for queen of pain also she died with four one charges and she died on int treads definitely could have been avoided there i'm pretty sure that that kill trade wasn't worth it for her to begin with anyway ryu bottom lane has a shadow amulet picks up a tree Gonna look to jump forward for this Luna and actually gonna just find himself in a corner here. Repel goes out. He's gonna get eclipsed up. Sentry gonna be dropped down and the proc of the purge. Oh, in fact, it is Ritsu to find the last hit there. Right, maybe rather fortunately for Vichy J Storm. They're gonna pop the Mask of Madness and look to get to work on this tower. There are enough heroes nearby though. Click on the tiny. Look at the duration. It's a negative. It's counting up from the time it spawned. Oh, Jesus. 
Meanwhile, jump forward, crush from Flea is going to reveal the Blink Dagger on top of the Rubik, gets the Corrosive Haze off as well. Now the Eclipse going to be popped, but the Disruption is there almost simultaneously, and most of that Eclipse kind of wasted, but it does end up finishing off the Razor. Now they're going to jump forward for more, Villain going to get the leap back, big Avalanche hits onto three. Now they'll come through with the Infernal Blade, Purification is there though from Snake King. Fade Bolt comes through though, and with the Tick, he does end up falling. Ryu in the front lines gets right clicked down by Ritsu, and now the Doom going to put the Infernal Blade into the back of the Luna. Dust is there though, Flea chasing as well, has the Blink, gets the Crush off, and no more detection it seems, now it, it's there, as VGJ will take out the Doom. We'll get a three for one when all is said and done there uh, as the Marana does escape early on but still a very decisive team fight win and finally we see Vici J um, put their advantage to use here in the bottom lane here here's exactly what happens so Snake King solo dies the or doesn't solo die he dies by himself top to the doom and then he sees he sees Queen of Pain Diamond so he he's like yo they don't have doom anymore let's just go run down the bottom lane and take two towers right and uh, that's what they did. Good plan. It seemed to work out. <laughs> 12 to 11 for VTJ Storm, but perhaps more importantly, uh, really taking control of the map now with that tier two down. Tier two threatened to drop relatively soon in the top lane as that eh, maybe Flea is as well. He's gonna get Ava tossed up. Couple of right clicks will be there though. Proves to be fairly tanky, the toss. It's so funny to watch. <laughs> if that hit him, it might have killed him, actually. It, it looked uh, it looked it to be really close. close. Yeah. Dire uh, Ward does scout both Snaking as well as Flea here. Snaking, though, hasted up. Makes it off to the west. Under the cover of smoke, could be in trouble now. Snaking going to get lifted instantly. Doom is there as well. Flea going to jump forward, gets a three-man crush. And they're looking for backup. It is coming, but rather slowly here. Net going to fly out. Connects onto Flea. The Lucent Beam is there. And the Purge. Rubik, not long for this world. We'll see if the rest of her... The rest of his, excuse me, unit can back out. Ryu nearby under the cover of Shadow Blade. Is going to find himself a Shadow Demon. It's going to be an easy kill on Slanking, Or is it? Jump forward. Crush going to hit only on one. And the toss coming through. As the disruption onto the Tiny from Stan King. Allowed him to dodge the crush. Meanwhile, Rioya, bot lane, pushing uh, the tier 3. Gets a little bit of damage done to it. Might be another initiation here with the uh, Luna Sweater. They've pinged out Flea and Ryu looking to find him here. Under the Shadow Blade. Gets the right click off. Net is even there. Toss up into the arrow and the Avalanche. Yeah. And it'll be a free one on the edge of that last engagement. Or Blue Pikachu. So... VTJ Storm, they're starting to approach the point where they might look to take Roche or they might look to take perhaps even a tier 3. They almost have that Hurricane Pike on Luna and I feel like this Aegis is going to be super important for them just because Blue Pikachu, a lot of their team fighters are kind of one and done in a way. Lincoln Sphere, I'm going to save 747 from the troll net and he will back out to safety as perhaps they look to re-engage here. Ryu completely out of mana on the Tiny, making his way off to the east, and it looks like Blue Pikachu will follow suit as Stan King making his way uphill. Was scouted by a Dire Ward, but no one willing to engage on him. He'll get himself some vision up on that same high ground. And again, VGJ Storm seem to be content with uh, what they've gained to this point. They're going to group as five, and look to draw the attention of BP. They will smoke, in fact, after pushing the wave forward. A couple of illusions. Gonna stand in and right-click, but BP, they've vacated the entire area of the map here, top. So I feel like VHJ Storm, they're starting to feel like, you know, they, they've bled a few kills in the last five minutes or so mm -hmm. that they probably feel weren't, uh, were, were like very avoidable. Jump forward mid lane, Blink Crush is going to find save. He's pretty much out in no man's land here. And one scream will finish him off from 747. They don't find anything on the north side as far as disruptions. Uh, there was Dire Vision scouting them. And they'll throw some illusions towards the mid lane. Look to work on Roche. 20 seconds on the sideline for the Rubik. So should mean that this goes down in VGJ Storm's favor. Smoking under the tower though. Three members of BP. Arrow will fly out. And 
will split the wickets as VTJ Storm looking to take it out. They get the Orchid off onto the Doom. He's just dead to rights. Ritsu picks up the Aegis. They get the Crush off on another. That's the Razor. Sonic Wave Leap is down to the low ground for Villain. He gets up to the high ground, but the projectiles will follow him. He'll drop. Three dead. No buybacks. Make it four as the Crush flies forward from Flea. Double kill for 747's seven, Quap. And up to the high ground they go as conveniently their wave joins them in the mid lane. Disruption is there. Ritsu with his illusions going to make quick work of these buildings. Jump fork forward as they try to make quick work of the Rubik. And triple kill into the pockets of the Queen of Pain. The Vici J Storm mid laner. And in quick succession, Vici J looking perhaps a little shaky at times in the last couple of minutes. And they just put it all together near the Roche pit. I mean, it, it looked like a really bad Roche fight for Flea. Actually, mm -hmm. down first. It looked like a really bad Roche fight, but realistically, yeah. that was the only way Blue Pikachu was going to win the game. If if EGJ Storm gets that Aegis, there's no way Blue Pikachu wins, just because yeah. Blue Pikachu, they're really reliant on on, on sort of this burst in their team fights. You know, you have the Avalanche Toss, you have the Doom, you have the Razor Link, and you know, if they have to commit all of that to kill. A Luna, and then the Luna just respawns. You know, if each storm, they can just push a Rax anyway. And you know, once they're one Rax up, the game becomes much easier. So they were pretty much forced to take that Roche fight. I mean, the alternative for them, I think, was to probably try to pick VGJ Storm off yeah. before they got in that pit. But you know, you see VGJ Storm, they were fully prepared to Orchid that Doom, they were fully prepared to sidestep that arrow. And you know, from then on, that became a really easy Roche, uh, Roche take yeah. for them. Now, I agree entirely. They were already down two tier twos at the time. Um, you know, VGJ Storm farming at a pace that's much quicker than theirs. They're a little more reliant on, on finding those kills. So definitely felt like the game just drags uh, quickly you know, in the favor of VGJ Storm if they get the Aegis. Either way, VGJ will take a 1-0 to lead in this MDL NA qualifier for MDL Macau. Uh, they're going to move on to face... who who uh, The winner of this series, excuse me, going to move on to face the winner of Optic versus IDC. Uh, that is happening tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Um, but for now, we'll have at least one more game in this series. Vici J Storm with a commanding Game 1 victory in 23 minutes. We'll be back shortly, guys. MRP and Franz for Game 2 of this one.